Are we well this morning? It's a cold morning, but are you well? Are you encouraged? Are you excited to be in the presence of the Lord? Amen. My name is Sarah Ghetto, and I am born again. Jesus is Lord and Savior in my life. And I will thank God because of the opportunity to stand here in your presence this morning and to humbly share the word of God with you. Amen. I want to thank uh, Bishop and Mom in absentia for the opportunity. I want to thank all the pastors and the leadership of this church, even for the opportunity for me to stand here. Indeed, looking back, way back in 2004, when my children were young and I walked into this church, first of all, I left them in the house. We just used to live somewhere here. And I came to survey whether this is a place that we would worship and I thank God that since then I have grown. When I entered that wooden church and I saw people sharing the word of God and standing on the pulpit, the first time I came here, Pastor Beatrice was sharing the word. And when I went home, I also had Pastor Kibira's face in mind because he was singing so passionately in praise and worship. So I had never would I imagine that I would one day, one time, stand here and share the word of God. Amen. So if you're there feeling the same thing as though the word of God is shared by them, not by me, please be encouraged. And I thank God because of the opportunities that we have been given to grow, you know, because we keep growing as we share it in our networks, in our men's group, in our ladies' network, and finally in the pulpit. Amaje. Amen. So be blessed. I'm grateful. I'm also grateful for my two sons who are here this morning, Ian and Felix. Maybe you can just raise up your hands. Thank you so much for being here, Asanteni. Uh, so today we will share the word of God and we are going to read from a number of verses. The message from today is the hand of the Lord. And the message that I am sharing this morning is a message that has been an encouragement to me in the recent past. So, when I got the opportunity to share, I said, I, I will normally ask myself, what word has the Lord been encouraging me with in the past? And that is the word that I'm going to share this morning. And we are going to read a couple of verses, and we are going to trust God for great things to happen in this service. Are you with me? Ask your neighbor whether they are with me. Are we together? So, uh, yesterday we were somewhere with, at a friend of mine's place, she's here, and we got an opportunity to share the word of God, and because it was some visitors who had come, as I started, I told them, you know, sometimes you plan and they also plan. So I was sharing the word and I was telling them, they were younger, younger girls, the ages of her daughter. Hata kama mulikuwa mmekuja na wad, musirudi na ayo. Yote niye, ni yetu. I will share and you will also share. Because you know in the word of God, you cannot get constipation. Amen? Actually, you are enriched. So this morning, through the message that I have prepared, we are going to share a number of verses. And my prayer and my hope is that at least one of the verses, or two, or even all of them, will be your rema word for the day. Are you with me? Amen. So as our sermon this morning is on the hand of the Lord. Ama mkono wabuana. Mkono wanani wabuana. And I know that we normally hear of various illustrations. Like utasikia mtu tunasemanga katika ushuhuda. Niliona mkono wabuana. Eh? Ama kuna wimbo tumependa sana sana kuimba siku hizi. Sana sana inaimba wakati wa harusi na inasemanga haijawa rahisi kufika hapa. Lakini ni mkono wa Bwana ume umenibeba. So uh, and maybe as you give that testimony that indeed I have seen the hand of God. Maybe you are referring to various situations. Possibly you are referring to how God you took through a difficult situation or a painful situation. It can be an illness or a separation from a loved one. It can be the loss of a job or a business opportunity. It can be ill health. But 
maybe something challenging. It can also be a job interview where the results were actually positive. So you really want to confess that you saw the victorious hand of the, of the Lord. But it can also be a malicious situation at a place of work. Pengine umewekelewa, you know? And you really, God took you through and you are coming to give a testimony. Uh, it can also be maybe you, ha you found favor with someone and indeed you declared that you saw the hand of the Lord. Or you were traveling and God took you through. Just la like our bishop and mom gave us a testimony of how they traveled safe and came back. But you may also be looking back at your life at a trail, you know, a trail of God's goodness and faithfulness upon your life, maybe upon your children or someone else that you know. And you can declare that indeed the hand of the Lord has been upon them. Or even maybe you are in a situation that has prolonged for long. Maybe you have been struggling, maybe to pay school fees for your children. Yes, they are in school, but it has not been easy. It has been a struggle term after term. Sometimes they have finished with a rare. Sometimes they have been sent home. You have given them the little that you have. They have gone and they have been accepted back. And you are, you are still on that tough process. But you, can, you are declaring that it is only by the hand of the Lord that you have been making it. Amen? So there are different illustrations. And my someone today is really not going, it's just going to share a tip. If all of you would be given something to share about the hand of God, you would all get something. Amen? You would all have something to share. So today we can look at it uh, from my perspective and God will bless us. So our main verse is Exodus 6.1. Exodus 6, 1 from the NIV. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh because of my mighty hand. He will let them go because of my mighty hand. He will drive them out of his country. Now, then the Lord said to Moses, now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh because of my mighty hand. He will let them go because of my mighty hand. He will drive them out of his country. The Lord repeats it two times. Now, there are various situations where Moses went to bed the Lord. But in this particular situation, it was earlier on when God had given Moses the instruction to go and tell Pharaoh to let God's people go. And when Pharaoh had that, his heart really hardened. The Bible says that God made his heart hard. And instead of softening to listen to the Lord's instructions. He did not even acknowledge who God was. He was asking Moses, challenging Moses, who is this your God? But he even tripled the labor, the slavery that was upon the children of Israel. Initially, they used to be supplied the raw materials to make the bricks, and they were required to produce a certain amount every day. But this time, Pharaoh uh, commanded they are supervisors that do not supply them the straw, but require of them to still make the amount that they are required to make each and every day. So life had become tough, and they were groaning, yeah, that because Moses has now started giving an indication to Pharaoh that God has said we go, this has even made life more difficult for us. So this was a situation where Pharaoh was not going to listen to the voice of God through Moses. And so Moses went to the Lord and he was telling the Lord, it is now even more difficult than it was before because of that which you have initiated. And God takes the opportunity to tell Moses, Moses, it is, it is because of my mighty hand that Pharaoh will let my people go. Amen? So God says, it is my mighty hand, it is my powerful hand that will uh, the, 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 it is because of my mighty hand that Pharaoh will let my people go. And of course, we know what happens, that it started with all the plagues that had to get into the nation of Israel before eventually Pharaoh surrendered. So when, when you think of phrases like, let us go and give, when maybe you decide in your cell group, like let us go and give a certain family a hand, yeah? or let us give them a helping hand, 
What does it indicate? It indicates that let us go and provide an assistant that is greatly needed. An assistant that is greatly needed. So the hand, it can be used as a metaphor for action, for care, and for possession. For action, for care, and for possession. And today specifically we touch on action, the action of the Lord, and also his care. Amen? And at the risk of those ones who find politics nostalgic, sometimes back, but also for the good of those who are able to associate with something physical, sometimes back when our late former president, uh, Mwai Kibaki, was uh, launching uh, what it's called, the second bid at the presidency. I think it was in the year 2007. Under the slogan of Kazi and Dele, one of the very big posters that he had put around the nation was for him in a white shirt. I don't know whether you remember. And then uh, the, the photo had him do something like this. You know? he, was, he was ready to fold his cuffs. Yani, cuffs are shirty, you know? And of course, when you see somebody doing like this, what does it indicate? They are getting ready to do something. So that photo was communicating that Kazi I Iendele, all right? So uh, he was showing us that his hands are ready to continue getting back to, to work. So uh, God does not have literal hands. And yet, his hands are mentioned many times in the Bible. There's so many verses about the hand of the Lord. This represents an understanding of God using human descriptors. That using those examples that I have given here about giving somebody a helping hand, then we can be able to comprehend even better about the hand of the Lord. So the purpose of my message today is that I felt that God wanted us to be reminded, encouraged that he's at work within us. Remember we said that the hand can be used as a metaphor for action, care, and possession. That God is at work in our individual lives, in the lives of our families, in the lives of our nation, which we have just committed to God and will keep committing to God, and also in the life of our church. So there are very many lessons, as I said, that we can learn about the hand of the Lord. But we'll quickly go just a few of them, and I hope there will be an encouragement to you. And the first one is that the hand of the Lord is mighty. And we go back to our key verse, Exodus 6 and verse 1, where the Lord says that it is because of a, my mighty hand that Pharaoh will let my people go. Because of my mighty hand, he will drive them out of his country. So, God's hand is mighty. And maybe in the previous context, in, in our current context, Pharaoh would represent an evil controlling power. It, Pharaoh would represent a force that holds us into bondage or hinders or limit us from being all what God created us to be and enjoying the goodness of God in our lives. So this morning, when we are reminded that God's mighty hand was able to deliver his children from the bondage that Pharaoh had helped him under, then we also know that God's mighty hand is able to deliver us from any such situations that have held us captive or bondage. Amen? Amen. In the book of Joshua 4, 2, 4, it was a time of great victory for the children of Israel as they crossed the river Jordan and as they watched God separate the waters of the Jordan River into two and give them a dry place to cross over. And after they crossed, God had commanded Joshua to set up a memorial using the 12 stones, each representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And Joshua had told the people that later on there were two memorials. One where the priests had stood with the ark of the Lord as the people crossed. 
and the other one was put on dry grounds. And this was Joshua in the book of Joshua 4 verse 24, telling the people, explaining, you know, what the people would explain to their children later on when they would be asked about the significance of the memorial that they had laid. And Joshua said, it is so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God wherever you go. Joshua was telling the people, explain to them that God has strength to do what we cannot do because we have encountered him parting the Jordan so that we, and we walked on dry ground as the Lord gave us victory. So the hand of the Lord is mighty. The hand of the Lord is victorious. It is triumphant. The hand of the Lord is victorious and triumphant. In Psalms 118 and verse 16, Psalms 118 and verse 16, the Bible says, um, I, I don't know whether you have the, yeah, I had put NIV. Okay, let me read NIV. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. In uh, NLT, it says, the strong right hand of the arm of the Lord is raised in triumph. The strong right arm of the Lord has done glorious things. And I believe that victory is going to be our song and our testimony, even as we approach the in gathering on third. Amen? Amen? Amen. That God is victorious. God's mighty arm is victorious. Which situation is that that we need victory over? God's strong arm is victorious. The arm of the Lord enabled us to triumph over situations that may be challenging. He is our victory. He's the one who gives us victory. And in relation to the first one, that God's hand is powerful. The hand of the Lord is powerful. The hand of the Lord is powerful. And power is the ability to make something happen. Power is the ability to make something happen. In Psalms 89 and verse 13, Psalms 89, please give us the NLT version. Just give us the NLT version. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, the Bible says, you can also help me read this one. Psalm 89 verse 13, let's read together. Powerful is your arm. Strong is your hand. Your right hand is lifted high in glorious strength. Powerful is your arm. Strong is your hand. And by the way, when you look at the scriptures, you can use hand or arm, whichever. The Bible uses them all, okay? I, I went to find out exactly what is a hand and what is an arm, but don't, don't worry, but just find out about it. So at, at least we all get the context of what we are talking about. So God's, word is powerful, uh, God's hand is powerful. It has the ability to make something happen, even that which ourselves may not be able to make happen. Uh, the hand of the Lord is creative. The hand of the Lord is creative. In the book of Isaiah 48 and verse 13, we go back to the NIV version. Isaiah 48 verse 13, the Bible says that it was my hand that laid the foundations of the earth. My right hand that spread out the heavens above. When I call out the stars, they all appear in order. So God gives us creativity to tap into what he has deposited in us. Creativity to tap into our gifts, our talents, our passions. He gives us creativity to tap into the knowledge that we have to do great initiatives. And in relation to that, Jeremiah 32 and verse 17 Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. This one we are going to sing. I had a morning choir. I don't know whether they will assist me sing. And the song goes by. It's a verse, but we will sing it as a song. Ah, Lord God. 
Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by your great power. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy outstretched arms. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee. Great and mighty God, great in counsel, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for thee. Amen. That God made the heaven and the earth by his great and outstretched arm. And that nothing, no situation is difficult for him. Amen? Amen. So, the hand of the Lord gives us favor. Favor. And in 2 Chronicles 30 and verse 12, the Bible says, this was a time when King Hezekiah was the king in Judah. And the people had really gone astray from the ways of the Lord. But he needed the people to come together and offer sacrifices and participate in uh, the Passover festival. And because of people going astray, they would, sometimes they would not heed to his call. But at this time, he acknowledges that when he sent his messengers all over Judah to tell them to come together in unity that they can worship the Lord, he acknowledges that it is the hand of the Lord that gave him favor and the people heeded to his call and they came together to corporately worship God. And it says in 2 Chronicles 30 and verse 12, also in Judah, the hand of God was on the people to give them unity of mind to carry out what the king and his officials had ordered. Following the word of the Lord, the hand of the Lord will give you favor with a person or with people. And I'm thinking at our family situation now as we approach the festival season. I don't know how your family is, but we know that not all families are united. But we can trust God. Maybe it is you have had a desire to bring your family together. That you can eat a meal in peace for once. And here, we are told that it is because of the hand of the Lord that was able to bring a people who are already rebellious together for one reason and that is to worship God. So who do you need favor with? Or is it with your boss? With it, is it with a difficult colleague? We all know our different situations and circumstances. Is it with a troublesome neighbor? Or are you the troublesome neighbor and someone needs favor with you? Amen? That the hand of the Lord is able to give you favor. Amen? The Bible says in Psalms 32 that God delights in every detail of your life. The uniqueness of your life, whatever it is, God delights in it. And the hand of the Lord is able to give us favor. And we know of one man by the name of Jabez, one in Chronicles 4 and 10, who experienced the favor of the Lord. We, the prayer of Jabez as we prayed, and Jabez called out to the God of Israel, if only you would bless me, Enlarge my territory. May your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. That Jabez recognized that if God's hand would be with him, then his story would change. He would be somebody of favor. He would be greatly blessed and pain would be far away from his life. So God's hand gives us favor. And number six, God's hand gives us a, is assuring during uncertain and fearful times. Assuring during uncertain and fearful situations. And in Isaiah 41 and verse 10, NIV, we can read this together. Isaiah 41 and verse 10, can we read together, church? So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then give us verse 13. 13 to 14. 13. Can we read that also? For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, 
Do not fear, I will help you. Do not be afraid, you warm Jacob and little Israel. Do not fear, for I myself will help you, declares the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So God's hand gives us assurance in fearful situation. That he tells us that he will outstretch his hand upon our lives. And he's going to be our help when wherever we go on what we do. So we can tie this then by saying that God's invisible and tangible hand is upon us. Amen? God's hand is leading us. It is guiding us. It is encouraging us. It is protecting us. It is strengthening us. And it is giving us the victory. Especially in situations that we ourselves are not able to go through. And as we prepare to conclude, we continue to see how God's hand has been working even through Jesus Christ, his son. We will now skip over to the New Testament. In, amen? That God's power was manifest in the coming of Christ. In John 6 and verse 38, Jesus Christ says that I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And in John 3.35, Jesus acknowledged that the Father loves the Son and he has given all things into his hands. So Jesus is implying that he has come in the authority of his Father. That the hand of the Lord has now been brought manifest on earth in the form of his beloved Son who comes as a true representation of his father in full force and in power. So even as we continue learning about the powerful hand of the Lord, we are going to look at one such incident that Jesus encountered that I love so much and that is a great encouragement to me. So we will look at a demonstration of God's powerful and mighty hand at work through Jesus at the miracle at Beth, 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 Bethesda, Bethesda, Bethesda. In John 5, 1 and verse 15. And this is the story of the man who had been an invalid or who had been uh, paralyzed. I was wondering whether it's paralyzed or crippled. It's paralyzed for 38 years. And uh, maybe you can just, just put in that even though we may not uh, read it all. And um, the Bible says that he had been an invalid for long. I don't know how many of those years he had been lying there at the pool, hoping that when the angel came and stirred up the water, as the Bible says, somebody would put him in. And nobody had put him in until Jesus passed his way. Remember, we are still talking about the hand, the hand of the Lord. So picking from that situation, and I hope that you will all go home and read that story. The situation had taken so long. The man had been an invalid for 38 years. Nataka kuuliza ni wangapi hawajafikisha miaka 38 hapa, lakini msinijibu. Yani he had been an invalid for more years than you are alive. Okay? The, his paralyzing situation had denied him many things. It had denied him the gift of good health. It had denied him the opportunity to live a normal life and all what goes with living a normal life. He said that he had no one. So this was a lonely man who was devoid of the love, the care, and the concern of his family and even of his cell his men's group, his church community. He said he had no one, there was no one to help him go at the pole. And we can uh, read that in verse 7. Can we read that in verse 7? No, 
verse 7. Uh, yeah, 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 I want the NLT. So, uh, when Jesus w- asked him whether he wants to get well, this is what he says. I can't, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one, no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. But remember, Jesus had only asked him a, a simple question. He had asked him, do you want to, to get well? All right? So this time, so there was no help at hand. And mark you, others had come and they had been healed. No wonder he was comparing his situations to the others who at least had someone to put them in the pool or who would wriggle their way to the pool, maybe because their situation was not as serious as, as his. But Jesus comes. And and I want you to get this. Jesus does not dwell on the negativity of the situation. You know, when he says that he has no one, yeah? Jesus does not say, you know, he doesn't say how unfortunate. Where are your people? Where is your mother? You have no elder brother. Where is your church community? Jesus does not dwell on that. He simply does what the man, he gives the man what the man needed. And in verse 8, Jesus tells him. What does Jesus tell him? Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Amen? And indeed, did the man get up? Did he enter the pool? Did he enter the pool? Jesus, the powerful hand of the Lord, bypassed the pool. Amen? The man got up, picked up his mat, and walked. And because we will appropriate this faith in a few minutes, as we entrust those situations in our lives that have proved difficult, and as we trust the powerful hand, the mighty hand, the caring hand of God, the hand that is full of favor to come through in our situation. But there are some truths that I want us to learn from this situation. The Bible says that instantly the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. He did not ask Jesus. He didn't ask Jesus that. And that is what he had seen many times, people jumping into the pool. But he trusted the word of the Lord. That get up, take up your mat and walk. He would even have been afraid of walking. Mark you, this is a man who had not walked for many years. But he did exactly what Jesus told him, told him to do. And this is what Jesus is telling him. He's telling him, go and live in the newness of the life that you have just received. The old is gone and the new has come. So, assuming his name was who? Assuming his name was who? uh, Let me just say David. So David, arise and go and live in the newness of the life that you have just received. And sometimes the Lord will do something for us. But because we are so used to the situation that we were living in before, that problematic situation, yeah, we are still looking back. And I like this illustration of somebody driving in front But the car is going in front, but you are looking back. Do you, do you, do you, can you relate to that? Yes, you're driving. The car is on drive, which means that it is going up, but you're looking behind. What will happen very soon? Yeah? It is going to crash, isn't it? So when you're looking, you dwell on that there is, when my brother Masharia was preaching here a few days ago, I don't remember the exact word, but he implied that There is some energy that you can draw from a situation. So when you now start dwelling of how you have been an invalid for 38 years, and you have been blessed with the newness of new life and good health, you are drawing back some negative energy from those situations that had held you bound. But this morning, I want us to know that Jesus wants us to live into the newness of what he's about to do in our lives and what he continues to do in our lives as he wins 
battles and as he overcomes situations for us. Amen? So he's telling him, live the rest of your life as though you have never been an invalid. Live the rest of your life as though you have never been an invalid. Live the rest of your life as though you have never been an addict. You know when we are delivered from those addictive behaviors? Live the rest of your life as though you had never been one. As though you had never been broken. As though you had never been covered with guilt and shame. Live the rest of your life in the newness of the life that Jesus is giving you today. He's telling us, cut the cords of what had paralyzed you. Cut the cords. This is what the man is being told. Cut the cords of what has paralyzed you. Leave the problematic situation behind once and for all. And now enter into the realm of the abundant life in John 10.10 10, that the Lord came to give us. All right? Yes, it is true that the enemy was at work to kill, steal, and destroy. But now Jesus has come and has given you abundant life. Live in the richness of that abundant life. In psychology, which I am a student, we have a therapy. Psychology is based on techniques. Uh, it involves uh, theories and techniques as a standard for assisting or helping. It is a helping career. People overcome their problems. And in one of the therapy that is called the narr narrative therapy, ther uh, therapy, you find out that normally when people come, maybe you have gone through a problematic situation for a long time until the problem and you have become intertwined. You are one. So this, uh, if I can just teach you a lead, it says that the problem is the problem. The person is not the problem, all right? The problem is the problem. The person is not the problem. So in doing that, one is able to externalize, to get the problem from within, externalize it, and deal with it from afar. And then you leave the problem behind, and you walk as a free, as a free person. And as we tie up this message, in Romans 15 and verse 4, Romans 15 and verse 4, the Bible says this, that such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. And the scriptures gives us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promises to be fulfilled. That it's not in vain that these scriptures have been written about the hand of the Lord and about Jesus intervening in this situation. So like the miracle of Beth Bethesda, you know, which had become a home base for this man. We have called him David today. But you know, I did not say he was. The Bible does not say he was called David. Eh? So, for now, eh? so like the miracle of Beth Bethesda, which had become a home base for this man. And yet he sought his miracle. Today, as we appropriate that word that God has given us, we can allow the powerful and the mighty hand of God to intervene and turn around our situations. And I don't know what situation is that that we are trusting God for. I don't know what you will call the miracle. For this man, for David, it was the miracle at Bethsda. For you, Sidri, is it the miracle at your father's place? Is it the miracle with your boss? Is it the miracle with somebody? What is that situation that you are trusting God to turn around? Is it at your place of work? Is it favor that you require from the Lord? Maybe it has become, at a, you already know that when you're going for the interview, but we have learned, you already say, I know someone else will be more experienced than me, or someone else will be more knowledgeable than me. You have already sealed your deal. But today we have learned that the mighty hand of the Lord is able to give us favor. So as we rise up to conclude, as I ask the praise and worship to join me on the altar, and I also ask the ministry team to just step forward and take time that you can come together and agree, appropriate that word, and agree concerning a situation. So let's all rise up. Let's all rise up. I just invite the ministry team to step forward 
please feel free to come and by faith, let us believe the powerful hand of the Lord to intervene in our situation. And also maybe you have never given your life to the Lord. And God's hand, that powerful hand of God, has been extended to us. And maybe you have never reached out and taken his hand. Today, would you take that step of faith to receive his son Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? So if you're not born again, you're welcome to the altar to agree with one of the ministry team members and they will lead you to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen.